Hello, I'm Steve Miller. Today we'll be talking about Reynolds stress models in the context of RAND's modeling, which is Reynolds Average Navier Stokes. And these are models where we try and use the entire transport equation for Reynolds stress. So previously in this class, we looked at zero equation, one equation, two equation models. And now we'll look at the Reynolds stress class of models. And one of the major advantages of these types of models is that we can go beyond the Buzanesque approximation. And this is valid and good for flows where there might be unsatisfactory predictions because of it. And we'll try and just introduce quickly what some of those deficiencies are. So these are eddy viscosity approximations, and the Buzanesque approximation will assume that the principal axes of the Reynolds stress tensor, Ta Ij, are indeed coincident with the mean straight rain tensor, Sij, at all points in the flow in space and time. This is an analog of Stokes um, hypothesis for laminar flow. And obviously we are interested in turbulent flow. And it would imply the Buzanes approximation that the coefficients of proportionality between Ta Ij and Sij is eddy viscosity. And unlike the molecular viscosity, the eddy viscosity depends on details of the flow under consideration. We also note that eddy viscosity is not altered by, but probably should be, the shape or nature of solid boundaries. the free stream turbulence intensity, or most significantly, the history effects of the flow. And history effects are very important for turbulence and turbulence modeling, especially with two-point type models. Now, it turns out that the flow history effects um, ta ij, the specific Reynolds stress, often persist for long distances within the flow. So this would cast some doubt on the simple relations between, say, ta ij and sij, which represents the Buzanesque approximation for the primary shear stress. So let's identify some of the deficiencies in the Buzanesque approximation. Indeed, for many flows, because of ones we've seen before, provide excellent predictions. Some of these applications and predictions might falter relative to measurement um, because of deficiencies in the Buzanesque approximation. And potentially, Reynolds stress might, uh, the models of Reynolds stress type Rand's closures might overcome them. And in particular, flows of sudden changes in mean straighten rates pose some of the biggest problems. And the Reynolds stresses would therefore need to adjust quickly to changes in flow, which might be unrelated to time and length scales. And therefore, the Buzanesque approximation would probably fail. Indeed, flows will experience extra rates of strain, which are caused by rapid dilatation, out-of-plane straining, or even streamlined curvatures, all of which give rise to unequal normal Reynolds stresses. And then these approximations of Buzanesque would be a bit suspect. So what are some example flows where the Buzanesque approximation probably fails? Well, 
maybe flows with sudden changes in mean strain, uh, say flows over curved surfaces. And I've noticed a lot of flight vehicles with curved surfaces. Uh, flows in ducts with, say, secondary flow motions. Other types of flows might be rotating fluids. Um, highly three-dimensional flows. And uh, there's many other examples, but maybe boundary layer separation. And these are given by different authors in different books on turbulence modeling. So let's look at one particular example of a flow of sudden change in strain rate, and that's given in Tucker and Reynolds in 1968. It's a nearly isotropic flow, turbulent flow, and subjected to a mean normal strain rate produced by the following mean flow field. Well, u is a constant, it's the u velocity. v is a negative a constant times y coordinate, and w might be a, that same constant times z. a here is a constant strain rate. So here the turbulence will become anisotropic as the result of uniform straining. Anisotropic. And it'll gradually approach isotropy downstream. Celebrate return to isotropy later. And an example uh, might be from one particular model of the K omega squared model of Wilcox and Rubison. And that was published in 1980. And in figure 7.1, we'll look at these comparisons um, by the so-called measured uh, distortion parameter K. So let's look at figure 7.1 quickly. The distortion parameter here is k on the y-axis, and here's the x-direction. These points are measurements of Tucker and Reynolds. This is adapted from the paper of Wilcox and Rubison, which we just referenced. And here's our prediction of the k omega squared model. You see it's relatively underpredicted, and there's uh, somewhat of a discontinuity in their prediction. Uh, so that needs to be overcome, just as an example of where this might fail. So you can see there's a sudden strain rate change at about x of 2.3 meters. That's this location here. And the model predicts an instantaneous return to isotropy. And why? Because all the Reynolds stresses are becoming equal when you have isotropy. In experiment, the turbulent approaches isotropy at a uniform rate. And the model predicts a discontinuity. Which isn't there. And this is just one example. It turns out there's many flows with strong curvature or separation, which the Boussinesse approximation just totally fails at. In the next class, we're going to look at some relations and closure in terms of the model.